Arc is stylish. It's got a cool icon and damn, have you seen this interface? It's built on Chromium, so all your favorite plugins and websites work in it. Everything lives over here in the sidebar. No, you can't move it somewhere else, but you can hide it. It's got a command bar and keyboard shortcuts for everything. Want to copy a link and remove those BS tracking codes? It's literally automatic. You can take notes in Arc, and you can use it to organize your thoughts with ease. Brilliant! It's got this reload animation. I mean, come on. You can theme the UI. You can add custom code to any website you want. Look, I replaced every mention of Web3 with my butt. It has a bunch more, and it's currently my favorite web browser on the Mac. Okay, so let's change gears entirely now. I just went very fast through some of the big things about Arc that appeal to me. But let's go ahead and jump into the screen share and I'll show you Arc in action. Um, just a couple housekeeping things ahead of time. Uh, number one, this app is currently in beta, so you have to join a wait list to get into it. I've been using it for about two months, um, but you may have to wait a little bit to use the app. Hopefully this video will help you understand what it's all about and whether you want to get on that list or not. Um, again, link is just in the description if you'd like that. It sounds like they're gonna release it to the public relatively soon, but yeah, they're currently slowly rolling it out. Uh, the second thing is I mentioned it in the uh, video already, but this is built on Chromium. So while it looks completely different from most other browsers that you've used, uh, it is going to render pages as you'd expect and your Chrome extensions are all gonna work just kind of how they do. Uh, I don't use a ton, I use one password. I use the matter for reading later um, extensions, but yeah, it all just kind of works pretty darn well. So uh, here's the app I've got it pulled up here and you can see the sidebar. The sidebar is the big thing. It's the big, maybe contentious thing that some people won't like so much. Um, but you can see like, these are my tabs all over here. Uh, I've got some other just like favorites up here and then bookmarked things are right there. So yeah, that's where everything lives. Um, you can go ahead and hit command T or say new tab. It'll bring up this command bar. So command T brings this up as well. So if I do command T, this comes up and so I can switch to some open tabs or I could do like a google.com and now I'm on Google, right? So uh, it basically just works like a normal address bar. Uh, I can also just click up here to get to the address here um, and kind of that same kind of a minimal version of what we just saw pops up. Um, you can resize this so you can make it as big or as small as you want. I kind of like it right around there, which I think is the default. Um, and yeah, so you can reload back and forward or here, all of your basic controls. Um, one of the things that's kind of cool here is you can set up different spaces. So this is kind of my main space is what I've called it. And I can rename it. Um, I can change the style. I can change the theme of this. Uh, I can change the icon that shows here to any of these or any emoji. Um, I kind of like that one. And then down here, you can see my other spaces. So this is my main space, but I also have my learning arc space, which has, uh, bookmarks to basically here's ARC on Twitter. Uh, here's the release notes for ARC so I can go check out what's changed, what's new, and you know, just see, okay, this was in the new release. Um, I've also got one for games. I have a lot of video game like stores and websites that I use on a regular basis and I wanna have quick access to those. So I basically have these different spaces and they also work with keyboard shortcuts. So control one, two, three, and then however many you have, uh, they can all pull up like that. Uh, you'll also notice that each of these look different, right? So they've got different background colors and everything. Um, to do that, you can go ahead and hit theme, uh, or you can right click in any empty space and go to it, and you can change the color. So you can do kind of a individual color. Uh, you can change the saturation and opacity of it. You can actually add grain if you'd like. And you can choose from any of these uh, kind of pre-built ones. You can move this around to kind of get what you want. You can add more colors. You can add up to three. Uh, so you kind of get like something like this. Like that's kind of, that's a lot, but <laughs> uh, maybe you turn down the, uh, the the intensity a little and then you get something like that. That might work. Maybe you want it all the way up. Um, yeah, this isn't quite right, but you know, you can kind of play around. That's kind of, here, what if we do something like that? That's actually pretty good. Oh boy, I've screwed it up. There we go. So let's do something like that. We'll add a little grain just for fun. And there you go. So now we have a different look to the app and you can see even things like the folder color here changed. If I hit command T, you can see the highlight is now kind of this purplish color and that's gonna change based on my space, right? So if I go to this one where everything's blue, uh, if I go ahead and uh, create a folder and it's just gonna be called untitled, we'll throw these in there you can see it's blue. 
in the space, it's pink or purple or whatever. So it changes, the UI elements change based on the space you're in. You can actually see a visual bug here <laughs> that happens a little bit. This is again, a beta, um, but yeah. So spaces, the sidebar, this can't be moved. So if I right click, there's no way for me to move this to like the top to do kind of more a more traditional browser. It's gonna live here on the left. You can't move it to the right either. It's going to live on the left. Uh, you can hit command S to hide it on demand. And if you hover over here, it'll come up over the page and you can kind of access things. I usually keep it visible, but if I'm on a laptop, sometimes I do like to hide it if I want somebody to take up the full width of the page or of the, sc the smaller screen that I'm on. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and go back here. Uh, one of the things that I like is there's a lot of keyboard shortcuts for the app. Um, so for example, if I wanted to uh, copy the URL that I'm on right now. I could do the traditional things, right? I could click into the address bar. I could copy it. That would work. Um, I could also hit command L to bring this up. I could copy it from here, or there's a dedicated keyboard shortcut command shift C. We'll just copy whatever your current URL is to the clipboard. And if we go to, uh, let's see, let me go ahead and add a refer. Like let's say someone came here from Amazon. So like the website looks the same and everything, but I've got that refer tag. If I'm sharing this with somebody, I probably don't want that on there, especially if it's like an ad tracking thing or whatever, that's just the. Um, so now if I do that same keyboard shortcut, it'll copy a clean link without the trackers. So now if I open a new tab and paste that URL, you can see it's there without the extra junk at the back of it, which is awesome. I love, love, love that it does that. That's so convenient for me, really a lot of the time. Um, so. That's really cool. Um, there's more keyboard shortcuts. Uh, if I go here, uh, there's a keyboard shortcuts page uh, where you can kind of see all the things that are here. A lot of these are kind of your expected ones that any browser would have, um, but there's just a lot of them <laughs> here. And then that command bar, the command T. So when I brought up this, there's a whole bunch of things you can do here, like kind of an absurd number of things uh, I can do, right? So tons of stuff here. I guess you could like pause on any table if you want to see the whole thing. But yeah, there's tons of things you can do from here, all from your keyboard, if that's the sort of thing that you'd like. Um, yeah, so that's really nice. I like the keyboard shortcuts. Um, another thing that's kind of rad is how um, screenshots work. So you can obviously just use your system to take screenshots, uh, but up here, and there's a keyboard shortcut to do it as well, uh, you can capture a portion of this page. So Command Shift 2, or you can just click and then you can kind of move around and I'm actually zoomed in, let me zoom to 100%. Um, there we go. So now we can kind of go around and find the thing we wanna take a screenshot of and take it. So this is what I wanna get a screenshot of. There we go. And I can choose to save it to my library, which we'll get to in a second. I can copy it to my clipboard, save it to my computer, send directly via iMessage. I can edit it. Uh, so like maybe I want to add an arrow right there and let's make it red. Okay, uh, and then I just want to kind of underline this. Cool, there we go. And then I'm just gonna hit escape, escape. And now you can see it's marked up and now I can copy it to my clipboard, save it to my desktop or whatever I wanna do. Um, let's go ahead and save it to my library. So save to the library and now I'm done. What is the library? <laughs> the library is a kind of cool thing down here in the bottom left that basically shows some recent files. And so if you wanted to, so we took that screenshot and now let's say I went to a website where I could upload a file. What I could actually do is say, okay, here's the screenshot, drag it over here, and then I could upload it just like I would pulling it in from the finder or from the doc or whatever um, that I was doing. If I actually go to the library, you can see it comes up in the sidebar and there's a whole bunch of files here. What are these? So this can be configured, um, but basically it's going to show files that are in these places over here because they're things you may want to access while you're in your browser. Uh, so recent screenshots, uh, like I just showed you. Uh, downloads, so there's your downloads folder, your desktop folder, your documents folder, uh, saved captures, uh, notes, and easels. Uh, so let me put notes in there as well. Um, but yeah, so these are files that are in those places. So a lot of these are on the desktop and my downloads folder. Some of these are screenshots from the video that you just watched. Um, but yeah, this is basically just a way to access those things without having to go to your finder, uh, which makes this ironically, if we go like full screen, 
Uh, this makes it a better experience in full screen mode because we all know it's a huge pain to have to like find a file and like drag it in from one desktop and like hold your mouse and then like do the keyboard shortcut command left and right to navigate back. Here, those files are just right here and you can go ahead and kind of just bring them in however you'd like. Now it's just gonna load that, which isn't super helpful here, but yeah, it is a nice kind of like little thing. And again, you can just bring it up with command shift L, uh, whatever you have here, screenshots, downloads, desktop, and then these are easels and notes, uh, which we'll get into, I guess, next. Let's do them next. Um, so there are some things you can do uh, in here with notes. Um, let's go ahead and actually let's go to the library and let's just bring up my daily stand-up notes. So this is a note that I just created um, and it's pretty simple, right? This isn't crazy. It's not a full Google Docs or anything, um, but you're able to name these notes. Uh, you're able to uh, format them with three headings, uh, body text, lists, uh, bulleted and numbered, bold under italics, underlines, images, and links can be put in here and everything. So Right, like so it's not crazy, but if you wanna be able to take some notes in your browser, uh, you can do that. Uh, those uh, kind of just appear over here as normal tabs. Uh, we'll go ahead and close that, go back to the library, and let's do an easel. So an easel is another thing. This is kind of like these collaborative uh, workspaces. Figma does these with Fig Jams. Uh, Apple uh, showed off one of these at WWDC a few months ago. And basically these are ways for you to just kind of Put things together. Uh, so you've got all your tools down here. I can add images. I can add text. Uh, yo, we'll put some text there. Uh, we can go ahead and make it bigger. We can change the font to any of these. We'll just go with that one. Hello, yo. Um, there we go. Uh, so yeah, we've kind of got some stuff here. If I want to get rid of the squiggle, just hit delete. And what's kind of cool here is I can actually share this. So how do I share this? Um, I can, okay, so I'm actually an idiot. I <laughs> have already shared this. There would normally be a button up here to uh, make it public. I've already shared it. Uh, so if I click on the globe there, I can set it to private, which means only I can view it. I can have other people view it uh, or let other people edit it. Uh, so they have to be an ARC user to edit it. Uh, but if it's just a view, um, we'll just go ahead and do that. Copy that to the clipboard. And we've got Safari over here and I can just load it up and it works great. Uh, it actually updates in real time. So if I like got rid of this arrow, you can see it's gone already. If I change this one to kind of this yellowish, it's yellowish, purple, purple. Move this over here so it's just under there, there. But I can't edit it from Safari. So yeah, that's what's going on here. Um, these aren't super useful to me, but I think that's really nice to have them built into the browser if you did want to use that. Um, so that's one thing. You can also make changes to websites. So this is something that's really gives me like early 2000s or late 90s vibes where you can kind of like, like Grease Monkey, I think was an extension, like Firefox extension people used to do this, but it's a way to insert custom code onto websites. So I'm gonna do something very, very simple here. Um, let's say I want to go ahead and make the background on this page uh, black and the, or we'll make it pink. We'll make it pink. Um, what I can do is I can go ahead and hit the plus button down here and here's where I can do some actions. All right. So these are kind of things we've already looked at, uh, but new boost. So now it puts us into split view and I'm going to go ahead and do style. I'm going to do it for a specific website for just this website. And okay. So now it's going to kind of show me it and make changes live. Uh, so let me go ahead and uncomment out this. So this is gonna make the background of the body pink. And let's go ahead and change the font everywhere to Helvetica. Uh, so I'm gonna select everything, font, family, Helvetica. We'll do Arial Helvetica sans serif. There we go. And a few of them haven't changed. I think that's because I need an important for the way the CSS is working. But there you go. So now all the text is Helvetica, or it's probably Arial. Let me get rid of that, because uh, I don't need that. There we go. So now it's slightly different. It's Helvetica now, and I got the pink background that I wanted. Um, I can actually choose a different color. Let's choose a slightly brighter pink. There we go. So that's how I want it to look. Uh, it's not an improvement, I don't think, but it's how I can change it if I'd like. Uh, and so I'm just going to go ahead and close this. I'm gonna close this uh, right here. And you can see like if I click on this, it's going to span across every page that I go to. 
Um, if you ever want to edit these or delete them, you can go up here and these basically live in the extension section. Uh, so you can see my extensions here and then uh, this is my boost. So this is the one boost I have active right now and I can click this to go into edit it or I can delete the boost. Now it's gone and if I reload this page, it's back to the normal styling. So boosts are really cool. Uh, they also let you change things. Um, on the page, like there's a lot you can do. You can insert your own JavaScript and do wild and crazy things if you want. Um, but like, for example, if you go to Twitter, you want to remove the trending topics on the Twitter's uh, Twitter's homepage, you can do that. It might keep you a little bit more sane <laughs> when browsing Twitter. Um, but yeah, what else? Uh, I think we've gone over pretty much everything of note. I just really like the animations, like this animation when the folder opens and closes is just really nice. I like the reload animation that happens here. I like how the progress bar kind of goes around the address bar. Like these are little things. They don't really matter a ton, but you're staring at, the, at this thing all day. You're using this a lot. And I just think it's nice for these things to look good and be fun. So yeah, that is Arc. Uh, it is probably not for everybody. I don't think it's a browser that everybody's going to love. I think the left navigation or like the left sidebar that does everything is going to put a lot of people off, I think it'll also appeal to a lot of people. I've never been a left sidebar. I'm always tabs on top, 100% of the time, tabs on top. Browsers always like to add like the left and right option. I never use it, but this works for me. Um, and I don't know why. I think it's just a combination of all the little things adding up to an experience that I really enjoy. So again, you can use the link in the description to check it out, see what it's like. Um, and yeah, it's totally free right now. I don't know what their business model is. Hopefully it'll be good. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this was an early look at Arc. Uh, new web browser and I hope you enjoyed if you did uh, you know like hit the like button subscribe if you loved it and that's it for me today thank you so much for watching bye bye